We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Good evening. Welcome to NUFC Matters uh, Supermac and Gibbo on a Thursday. Good evening, chaps. Hi, Hi boys. Hi, welcome. Good to see you, lads. And uh, as always, good to see everybody in the chat. Sorry we're slightly late. We had a little bit to discuss off screen. Uh, nothing to do with the breaking news today, which um, sometimes Malcolm doesn't see the breaking news. Um, and it's not good news. Uh, John, I'm sure I will have Is seen this it. on Tonali? Yeah, um, I'm just going to read the, the statement from the FA. Sandro Tonali has been charged with misconduct in relation to alleged breaches of the FA's betting rules. It's alleged that the Newcastle United midfielder breached FA Rule E8 50 times by placing bets on football matches between August the 12th and October the 12th, 2023. Sandro Tonali has until the 5th of April 2024 to respond. 12th of August 2023 was the first day of the Premier League season when Tonali made a goal-scoring debut for the Magpies against Aston Villa at Gallagher. And 12th of October 2023 was just short of a week before the news of Tonali's betting breaches in Italy broke and during an international break when several Euro 2024 qualifiers took place. But Italy weren't in action. The Italian midfielder, of course, is currently suspended from all forms of football until August the 27th this year just under two weeks after the Premier League season kicks off. So, it remains to be seen whether he'll serve a further ban for these subsequent rule breaches, with media reports on Thursday divided over that possibility. Right, John. Yeah. Oh, go on, Malcolm. You've got the bit between well, your teeth. For me, that because he hasn't as yet been charged, or that this is the first charge um, by, the, um, by the English football authorities. Uh, and so... That having this recent history over in Italy, they'll do him heavily. I'm sure of it. Well, the the word coming out of Newcastle. I mean, first and foremost, the thing to say is that having done all the betting that he did in Italy on all the games before he come to Newcastle, mm -hmm. and bear in mind at this stage when he come to Newcastle, we didn't know of any of this, and the Italian FA hadn't announced anything of this, it would have been very naive of anybody to think that he was suddenly going to stop just because he was transferred to Newcastle. He was going yeah. to continue. It's addictive. It's his habit. It. He was going to. It's. It was inevitable that he was continuing that lifestyle, and that he must have been doing it over here until he was charged by the sure. Italian. The, th the thing is, though, John, that the Italians, I don't think, have informed Newcastle United of what was going. What well, was that's United. in the past now. That's. I know it's in the, the past, but but you would have thought that. Um, you know that that we're all in the same business together. That they would have at least given a bit of a warning, and for Newcastle to prevent him from gambling. Well, the situation is that it was quite. If you've got an addiction, if you if you like to have a drink, you don't just suddenly stop because you move house, uh, and and that's all the Tenali did it was move yeah. house. So it was obvious. I'm not meaning this as an excuse or anything. What I'm meaning is. That it was obvious that we were waiting with trepidation that he would have continued to be betting when he came here 
um, because that was a lifestyle. Now, the, and, and of course, that has been proved to be true. We don't know the details of it, like we eventually got the details of the Italian FA, but the word coming out of Newcastle United, uh, uh, although, of course, we've got to wait and get confirmation from the FA and from the, in, uh, the independent tribunal, but the word coming out from Newcastle United is that they are expecting the ban from the English FA, which is for 50 bets as opposed to whatever it was over in Italy in the 100 nod it was for mm -hmm. Ivan Tony when he when he was doing it, that it will be seen as an unbroken betting spree, i.e. a one-off that started in Italy and ended here. There wasn't a break in between and then he went back to it. And that therefore Newcastle United privately are very hopeful that any uh, suspension will be shorter term because of course it happens shorter term and he's come clean in Italy and no doubt will come clean here so that is always taken into consideration and mm -hmm. that his short ban will run concurrently with the ban that he's now on right so this is in, this is interesting that, um, that from on the same day Dawson, he'll be uh, he'll still be finished and clear on the same day so that in fact it will not impact on his return. Mm. I mean, this is what Craig Hope's running with, and and if that's the case, happy days. Um, it's a sour, I'm, that's sour what, start. That's what, that's what I'm told as well, Steve. What Craig's yeah. just you put on screen. Yeah, Craig, Craig Hope. Yeah, it's not the FA. The FA will treat Tonali's alleged breaches as one period of betting activity Italy and England, meaning he's likely to avoid a ban being added to his current suspension and any punishment will instead run concurrently. Run concurrently. That's, right. that's just what I've said on screen. That's Great stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's all, let's all get our prayer maps yeah. out, everybody who it, follows it, NUFC matters, and pray that that happens. Yes, it's interesting what you said, Steve, that, that it, it's one continuous long line of betting isn't it yeah it, it, it's the, happened from, from the day he started Italy, yeah. all the way through sure. to when he was found out and it become public so, and he started his yeah. rehabilitation yeah so looking at it from that point of view it's it's reasonable to to understand that it, it that the sentence any sentence he gets from the english fa would run concurrently because 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 the ban that he's now under, given by the Italian FA, is worldwide, so it includes yes. the ban in this country. So he's already banned in this country for 10 That's months right. because it's worldwide banned. Um, and yeah. so they're expecting, and this will clear it all up, of course, unless the boy was stupid enough to do the same thing again. And I don't think anybody would be that stupid because his livelihood mm. would then be on the line. And, of course, he's going through rehabilitation. He's having to go back to Italy about 12 times during the 10-month um, period of the ban to do rehabilitation out there and to talk to groups of young players and young people about the, about the dangers of betting, etc., etc. So the rehabilitation is underway, undergoing already and of course he's still training with newcastle etc but he's going back over there about a dozen times in the 10 months that he, that he's mm -hmm. back as part of the crime if you like for the want of a, a bad word yeah uh, but well, uh, it's, it's given him plenty of time to learn the english language isn't it well presumably that's what he's been doing in his afternoons i hope yeah, yes, hope uh, so, yes. Ab absolutely but, I mean, the, the hope we've got to have, guys, is that he comes back in the right, is very, that he's very strong willpower in mind, etc. And that he comes back in the way Ivan Tony's come back. Because Ivan Tony's come back and become an England player. Yes, he has. <laughs> you know, so you've got to hope that Tonari <laughs> comes back and is as strong minded as Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony's very strong minded. Strong will, powerful, mm -hmm. confident, won't let him get it, anything get him down. He has come back very, very strong. And our hope, i.e., the hour being Newcastle United, 
the club we love and the club we support benefit because he comes back as strongly as Ivan Tony, and and he comes back with a belief that he owes the club something. Because I was suspicious before this come out, guys, when he was playing for us after his sensational start against Aston Villa, I thought he was very average. And I thought for a long time he looked as if he, he wished he wasn't here, that he was still playing football in Italy for his beloved AC Milan. It might just be that this will have cleared his mind and he will say, hey, this club's been terrific to me. The fans yeah. have been terrific to me. They've been chanting my name at away games, etc., etc. The club have been terrific to me. I owe this, these people, this country, and this club, and these fans an awful lot. And he comes back with a clearer state of mind and a determination to do well here. That's my hope. Right. And just on this point that Chris Dawson has, has made, um, where he's talking of addiction as a disease, um, I understand what you're saying, but, but banned for having the disease? No. He's been banned, not for having it, he's been banned for placing bets on the industry that he's in. It, he would have been all right, horse racing, greyhound racing, or rain the one on a window. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he would have been fine on that. You, but because he's involved in football, you can't bet within your own industry. I, I, I think he is currently receiving a huge amount of help. I think he's sought help, but he's also had to accept help as part of his punishment. I, in that's court. right. And, yeah. and therefore, you know, look at, look at Ivan Tony. He's yes. come back terrific. And we, yes, he has, we he? everybody Quite associated remarkable. with Newcastle United has got to hope that this guy, the interesting thing, guys, if I can just throw it forward, you know, we've all seen Nottingham Forest get points deducted and Everton get points deducted and have wondered what's happened to Manchester City. And it may be because there's a hundred uh, charges and it takes so long. But you've got Tenali in the middle of a ban. And the guy that's going to play up here on Saturday, Patek, is, is, being in, is being currently looked at by our FA for betting illegally. In his yes. case, hasn't even come up yet. Yeah, but, yeah, and he's Bruno's big Bruno, mate. Bruno's mate that's coming to play against us on Saturday afternoon. Yes. He's been investigated. Mm. Yeah, and he, he looked good in the... Um... In, in the international recently. Oh, he's a terrific player. I tell you what, yeah. he's, a naughty, he's a naughty little boy. He, he, oh, he, he all puts his yeah. foot in and commits he, fouls. And it, In fact, it wouldn't have surprised me if he had got sent off. Oh, he was very, very close to his he, second booking. He, he's a naughty, yeah. naughty little boy. He's a beautiful a player, but a naughty little yeah. boy. But then so is his best mate, you know. Bruno can be a bit naughty himself. <laughs> Any uh, news on, on the injury situation, John, just while we're talking internationals? I'll come to Anthony Gordon in a minute. But no. I just want to I just want to know, have you heard anything about Dubravka? He was recalled from Slovakia, of yeah, I mean, course, and, and Lewis Miley were here, could could have a back injury, and, and of course Bruno came back with trouble with his thigh. Well, I mean, you know, it was so much in the dark. We don't even know about Livermento and Trippier who trip you yeah, in Livermento missed our last game because of injury. What stage are they at towards coming back? What stage is Dubravka? What were the personal reasons? And I don't mean we should delve into something that mightn't be our business, but does it make him unavailable for Saturday or does it make him available for Saturday? Mm -hmm. Lewis Smiley, mm -hmm. no chance. And we'll, we'll be lucky if we see him again this season because the back injuries sustained playing for the, the England under-20s or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, he's having a scan to see if he'll play again this season, but the likelihood is that he won't. And that's horrendous coming because we need so many people. But isn't it ironic and perhaps typical of Newcastle that the only reason, well, that's not strictly true, but the main reason Lewis Miley has played all these first-team games for Newcastle is that Elliot Anderson got a back injury. 
because Elliot Anderson's only 21. He's he's a young boy, but he was going to be the star. He would have been playing all these games. He'd got a freak back injury, and all of a sudden, Lewis Miley's in the team regularly. Now what's sure. happening? Lewis Miley's going out the team with a back injury, and it could well be that Elliot Anderson comes into the team because he isn't there, because he's recovering yeah. from a back injury. It is ironic, and the injuries is just ludicrous and i don't really want to go there because well, it is john but, but i have never known any club to have so many long-term injuries in a single season and uh, uh, and if i were the manager i would be wanting to know from the medical people well well come well, on i'm certain can... i'm certain they're looking into that malcolm I'm, i mean I'm they're not that i'm sure they are but but the injuries persist, John. They keep coming. Oh sure, sure. Uh, I mean, there will be an internal is investigation because you know, the, the theory, and there's got to be because it's one of two things. And I said this on last week's podcast, so I don't want to go over it too much. But it's either something wrong in training or something wrong medically yeah. because yeah. It, there's, it's happening too much. So there's got to be an internal investigation to see which of those two things, why they're putting too much stress on them with a high press and can they do it and keep it up without, without the body being stretched beyond its limits or are we getting it wrong medically? But there's something wrong somewhere because it's going beyond... Uh, oh, beyond I, I have never known such a stream of but long injuries. We must also stress, we must also stress in the interest of fairness, I think, guys, that some of these injuries have been freakish and have got nothing to do with Newcastle playing a high octane game or just yeah. being desperately unlucky. When you yeah. think of the height that Byrne fell from when he got his back injury and was out, I mean, that that just happens. You think Harvey Barnes has a toe injury I've never heard of. Um, <laughs> how freakish is that? He did it in about a minute and a half of a game. Yeah. A toe injury under the toe. I tell you what, I've seen more of Lord Luke and Ryden Shergar down Northumberland Street than I've seen of Harvey Barnes since he signed for Newcastle. It's been crazy. And 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 what happened with Elliot Anderson? He was getting out of bed or some did somebody rugby tackle him or what? Was he getting out of bed when he had his back injury? I mean, there's been some real crazy freakish ones as well. But the whole thing, I mean, you know, I I hear of Lewis Miley getting injured away with England under 20s or something, and I hardly raise an eyebrow because it happens all the time. I hear Dubrovka coming back for personal reasons, having just let in the quickest goal in international football has ever seen in six seconds. And I say, well, you know, I would have been surprised if something like that hadn't happened because it yeah. just happens this season. It's all crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Okay, yeah. plenty to talk about. I still um, kind, I John, I still kind the record. I'm, What's that? I'm oh, for the quick the, goal. For the for the quickest goal, yeah, in football. I do um, want to talk about Anthony Gordon. How did you think he fared, Malcolm, in those two uh, friendlies at the weekend? Uh, Brazil, of course, and then I obviously thought he was played. terrific. Yeah. I, said, I, 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 I couldn't believe that he didn't get the star man. Um. It, it, in, in, the, in the newspapers that I was reading, um, I thought he was the outstanding player for England, um, and uh, and good for him. I think he's um, he's done his international career the a power of good um, these last few days. Well done to him. Well done. I, I think he, I'm like Malcolm. I think he was absolutely outstanding against Brazil. He yeah. worked forward, he worked back, which is what England needed because they didn't have a quality left back in the game. They needed him to work back as well as forward. And I think he's put himself on the plane to the Euros. Um, oh, for sure he has, John. For yeah, sure. And I was so pleased yeah. for the boy. He'll be one because... of the first names on the, on the team yeah, sheet. And I was and, so pleased for the boy and... because he's wanted it so much. I mean, he's wanted it so much, he's told the missus that you couldn't book the summer holidays for him because he didn't want to book for the Euros because he wanted to go to the Euros. Good yeah. for him because I think he will yeah. go to the Euros now. And I tell you what, 
I was thrilled to bits for two reasons when I watched him against Brazil. I was thrilled to bits for him because he deserved it. And I was thrilled to bits that he wasn't injured because everybody else does get it. Sure. Because, sure. because he's by far and away for me our player of the season. Yes. I think he's yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and and what, what I noticed um, in the international matches was uh, particularly against Brazil, that the Brazilians were getting quite vexed when he got the ball, vexed with each other, and, and that they were having to go outside of their normal game to deal with him. You know, and when, when Brazilians find that they're having to alter their um, usually such brilliant game, um, because of because of an opponent, that's something special. Mind you, in Paqueta and Bruno, who are the best of pals, they've got two hammer throwers as well as wonderful footballers there because yeah, yeah. They, can, yeah. they, they can dish it out all right, both those boys. That's oh, why brilliant. we're sweating every every match on Bruno getting another booking and a two-match suspension because yeah. If, yeah. if things aren't quite right, he, he can lose his head and put the clog in, no danger. And I thought, as Malcolm said early on, I thought the West Ham boy could have been sent off against England. Yeah, I thought that. He, he I thought he, he could have been. Early. Mm. He got a booking yeah. early and could have been sent off. It'll be yeah. interesting to see the midfield on Saturday, Bruno v Paquetta, because he will put the boot around as well as being a... <laughs> I mean, he's one of these people that it can be a wonderful... He's got all the skills of a Brazilian and he's got all the, the bite of uh, Nobby Styles. Um, yeah. So it's going to be interesting on Saturday. Yeah, it's a wonderful um, situation, isn't it? International football um, that, it, that it can um, create. That, that uh, um, one, one, one evening that they're playing against each other and then on the weekend... They're playing with each oh, other. They're playing with each other, and then they're and then they're playing against each other. And Absolutely. I I want to see if it, if it's a kicking match between. Them. Well, uh, I mean, if Bruno if Bruno wants to kill him, then I don't mind. <laughs> well, I if, if if Bruno knows Paqueta better than any other person in in the world. Absolutely. Uh, um, as far as he's... The, I tell you what, we, we've always thought of Brazilians with silky skills, Malcolm, and they have got that. But just thinking aloud, we've talked about two boys there that can half play, but they can half put oh. the clog in. And, and what we are missing is the third Brazilian who can put the clog in as well, and that's Joe Linton. And that's Joe Linton. He's a quality and, player whose well, physical presence is very important to us. Well, they, but they are hard as nails. The Brazilians, Brazilians and Portuguese, they are absolutely hard as nails and ruthless with it. And there was uh, there was nobody harder, Malcolm. There was nobody harder than Pele, although he could play. He just yeah, got up. Every time yes. he was done, he just got up. Yeah, he just got up. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't need to go around booting people at all. No. He relied on his skill to make it to, to find his space. Okay, um, just want to uh, go into one more topic before we get to where uh, the has lots of comments coming in and uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, pointers for potential talk. But Paul Watson, I already had this on my list. He says, Super Mac, can you tell us more about the campaign you've started for a statue with Joe Harvey? Uh, Gibbo, you carried this in your column in the Chronicle this week. Um, Joe Harvey, um, a man who should never be forgotten um, at our club, um, won trophies as a, as a player and as a manager. Um, Joe Harvey should have um, a statue 100% successful as both player and manager, says C. Dan Smith. Uh, tell us and about coach. this, lads. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So are you starting are you starting to are you starting a campaign lads what's the, what's the situation John what was the substance yeah. of the article you wrote in the chronicle well um uh, the original article before I did Malcolm's backup article was a result I'm the president of the first club as you well know Steve you had things to do with the first club in the past and and over the plaque that's already there and um Mr Eddie did a, a, a 
a throwaway line not too long ago asking Newcastle United fans if they thought there was anybody in Newcastle United's history that deserved perhaps a, a statue. And as a consequence of that, the first club took up the cudgel on behalf of Joe and sort of said, is there anybody more worthy than Joe Harvey? And, you know, it's got to be said that while I adore uh, Bobby Robson because I love him to death and because he's a Geordie and a great friend of mine, he actually won nothing for us and never played for us. Joe Harvey played for us, managed us, was a coach with us, was a chief scout with us, won two cup finals as a captain, coaching 55, won the European first cup. There's nothing more that Joe could have done. And he deserves recognition, in my humble opinion, way before virtually everybody else. At the moment, we have three statues. I hold my hands up and say, well done, correct, on Shearer and Wall Jackie, the two greatest goal scorers we've ever had. But surely Joe Harvey uh, is the man that deserves to be with that. And yes, unashamedly, I will continue to beat the gong for Joe because mm -hmm. I think it's deserved. And I would, I think, and, and Malcolm made the point, and Malcolm, like me, loves Bobby Robson for several reasons, in Malcolm's case, because of what he did from with Fulham. But at Newcastle, Bobby deserves everything he's got at, at Ipswich, etc., etc. But at Newcastle, you can't say Bobby Robson deserves a statue and Joe Harvey doesn't. I What's your thoughts, Mal? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, that's... Um... I, I, I just, I just find it somewhat bizarre that um, that uh, they put a statue up of Bobby Robson. But do you remember the the ridiculous way in which he was sacked? Um, oh yes, of course I do. Of course I yeah. do. Yeah, four um, games okay, in the new so season. He got us in the Champions League for a couple of seasons, but um, but didn't win anything. Joe Harvey won the lot at Newcastle United as a player, as a coach, and as a manager. And nobody can, can better him on that. Um, and and I, I, I thought it, uh, um, I, I, I just thought it was, it was in bad taste that the, that the club, um, when asked um, um, if they could put a plaque of Joe Harvey up, that the club said to the people um, wanting to do it, where well, yeah, you can put it round opposite the strawberry, and it's sort of like the the bum end of, of, of the stadium, for heaven's sake. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to be rude um, to anybody in particular who watches the game from there, but but the statues around the other side, um, and uh, and I, that's where I think he should be, pride of place, in fact. Absolute pride of place. The fact that he didn't get a statue first time round was simply down to finances. I mean, you know, like I say, the the, the Fairs Club raised five thousand. We raised five thousand with regards to, um, you know, with regards to an event we did um, at the at the Fed, and you know, the plaque was put up. But you know, statue costs considerably yeah. more. And um, you know, I, I think the club. Yeah, I well that, that, Steve. But uh, um, but for what Joe did for the club. I think I think that um, there should have been an awful lot more from the club it's, itself. Yeah. That, that's the point, Malcolm. Yes, the the situation is that the Fairs Club and the people that supported the Fairs Club, like yourself, Steve, they, they couldn't afford a statue. That's why there wasn't a statue. But this is a new regime from then. It, mm. this, you know, mm. we were talking. Ashley, we're now talking about the salary. The Saudis could put up a, a, a statue of any Newcastle player without looking to the first club sure. to finance it, or they could put up a good proportion of the money that would bring it back in to to common play. Um, and, and it was Newcastle United themselves floating the idea of, does anybody in our past really deserve some extra special um, acknowledgement? And the yeah. answer to that was yes, in that and the yes is Joe Harvey. Now, yes, mm -hmm. there's cases can be made. If you go back far enough, you can make out a case for Colin Veach, you can make out a case 
for Stan Seymour Senior, played in the 27 side that won the last championship, played in the 24 Cup final, was Mr. Newcastle United when they won the FA Cup, etc. etc. You can make cases out for but people yeah, would yeah, make cases for Kevin Keegan. But for John, me, what, what, Joe Harvey and it is the epitome of everything yeah. Newcastle United's about. And therefore, he's the one for me that's a personal situation. I think it is for Malcolm. And I think it is for a lot of fans too. They recognise Joe yeah. for what he was to us. Absolutely. And I think that he should be um, post-war um, the number one. Pre-war should be the little Scotsman who's the top goal scorer for Newcastle United Jimmy in Gallagher. I don't think you're ever going to... The interesting thing, Malcolm, is, you, you, you know, some of these boys... I mean, if you take the Edwardian side from 1900 to 1911, they won all the championships and played in six mm -hmm. FA Cup finals. And, you know, Colin Veach from that side, Bill McCracken from that side, Lawrence, who made the goalkeeper, who's made the most appearances ever for the club. But you're not going to get statues for them over 100 no. years ago. It's too late. It isn't going to happen. You're going to get backing for more, for more recent okay. people. Right. And I think yes. Joe Harvey epitomises what Newcastle, the modern, to me, he's the granddad of the modern Newcastle United. Okay, but you were mentioning the um, the Arabs. Would it, how would the Arabs even know of him? Sorry? How would the Arabs even know of Joe Harvey? Well, they will now, or they can have a look in the record books. <laughs> well, yeah. Do you think they will, though? Well, why why did Darren Hughes bring this why, why did Darren Hughes bring the Newcastle. subject up? I mean, why did Darren Hughes bring the subject up? Who deserves it? Was he expecting it to be Chris Wood and, or, or, or some <laughs> somebody from their era? There's the one man voting for Chris Wood there. Actually, it's two men. I, I do believe Chris voted for himself as well. But then um, there you go. But I mean, you know, it you can't have it too modern at the moment. You've got to have it if this game is about winning things, and football is, mm. then who do you look at beyond Joe Harvey? That's right. Yes. Couldn't agree more. OK, yeah. we are halfway through the show. It is time for the ads. A big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. Go to their website, skipsandbins.com. Email inquiries at skipsandbins.com or telephone 0800 25 45 25 3. Easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Go to their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk or telephone 01768 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. Go to their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email info at unitedgrouptravel.com or phone 01670 632 460 on mobile 0791 666 4174. They're a local company from Morbeth and there are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Big thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video side of things. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button under the video, click the thumb up to like the video, and click share to share to your social media. If you want to help the channel financially, you can pay a one off £25 fee. You get a cup, a scarf, a pen and a membership card and entry into the NUFC Matters monthly draw. Email john at nufcmatters.com for more details. Or if you've got a smartphone, scan the QR code now and it takes you straight to the membership pack. We also support the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk and you'll find the match day bucket. You can make a donation virtually today. You can also find us on iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast providers. We also do events during the year. NUFC Matters Live will be at the O2 City Hall on Friday the 2nd of August for an evening with Rob Lee, one night in Antwerp. Tickets start at £15, and you can get them from ticketmaster.co.uk. An evening with the entertainers takes place on Friday the 24th of January 2025 at the Tyne Theatre and Opera House in Newcastle. Telephone 0844 249 1000 or visit the website tynetheatreandoperahouse.uk to buy tickets today. You can also catch me on the Northeast Footy Breakfast Show 
Live on Tune Radio, weekdays 7 till 9am on DAB, smart speakers and the TuneUK.com. And don't forget, we've got the end of season due. Uh, we're raising money for uh, the Dementia Matters charity. Tickets are a tenner. And we've got Gibbo and Supermac uh, doing a talking. We've got Ask George. We've got the Long Sands playing as well. NUFCMatters.com and NewcastleLegends.com is where you can find tickets for that price of the tenner. And Gibbo and Peter Beardsley at the Irish Centre in June. Tickets for that are on voucher priced £19. And Malcolm, you've got an event as well you want to plug? Yes, it's been organised at very short notice by Chris Cross, the uh, the most fabulous magician and, and a very funny man. And he's asked me to take part with him. And uh, and, and so we're having an evening with uh, with myself and Chris Cross. It's at the uh, Gibside Hotel in Wickham. And uh, tickets are £10 a head. And they are available from uh, chris-cross.co.uk. And, uh, he's not, he's not going to magic you out of a hat, Malcolm, is he? Like the uh, rabbit, he's not going to oh, bring you out of a hat or anything. Oh yeah, I'm sure to disappear. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he, he can do. He can do what centre halves never did. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> And don't forget, we've also got the NUFC Matter auction, which is, uh, I've just put the link in the chat. We've got 18 or 19 uh, things up for grabs. So if you want to get on there, um, plenty of bargains to be had. Uh, get yourself onto that link this afternoon or this evening. And uh, it finishes tomorrow. Okay, uh, we've got uh, football again uh, this weekend. Newcastle United uh, back in Premiership action on Sunday. And of course, on Tuesday night, Easter weekend, uh, often brings uh, multiple fixtures. Uh, two home games for Newcastle, which is... Uh, which is nice rather than uh, away games to, to have to deal with at ridiculous times where people can't get there and back. First up, West Ham. Let's talk about that. 12.30 kickoff on TNT Sports. Uh, team news, a bit early, obviously, to find out um, what we need to know about the likes of Livermento and Kieran Trippier. But we do know Tenali is out. Nick Pope, Callum Wilson, Joe Linton, Sven Botman, uh, all definitely out. We're hoping for better news, maybe on Harvey Barnes, Kieran Trippier and Tino. Lewis, Lewis Miley, again, question marks over how long he could be out. And uh, no news on what's happening with Martin Dubravka. Was it a personal issue or was it another Was it another injury? Um, mm. Also, Bruno coming back with a thigh strain. One would imagine he will be OK. Uh, but Eddie Howe's press conference, he's going to get hit with quite a few questions about player availability tomorrow. If Bruno does make it, of course, he is uh, still walking the tightrope. Uh, of Premier League suspension. Uh, he's still currently on nine bookings. One more will see him banned. Anthony Gordon, uh, two more bookings will see him suffer the same fate. Uh, the cut-off point to avoid a ban, of course, is 32 games, so not long to go now. The lads have done very well. West Ham United, well, early team news coming out of there. Edson Alvarez, uh, Edson Alvarez is suspended. Maxwell Corny and Mohamed Kudus are both doubtful at the moment. Uh, the Hammers come to St James's Park um, in unbeaten in their last four Premier League games, uh, but winless in two, uh, having drawn with both Aston Villa and Burnley at the London Stadium. On the road this season, David Moyes' team have guided, uh, well, he's guided his side to six wins, two draws and six defeats. They've only had one clean sheet during those games, and that was at Arsenal. Um, tells you a little bit about how they tend to play when they're away from home. Uh, but yeah, 12.30 kickoff, awful kickoff time that. Uh, so it means that Gibbo and Ando will be in the Irish Centre after the game, uh, probably about half an hour after the game, if you want to come along and see them. Free entry into the Irish Centre. Uh, kids are welcome. Referees Robert Jones. Uh, this is his fourth game looking after a Newcastle fixture. Um, and he took he took charge of the 1-0 defeat at Manchester City at the start of the season. Uh, and the 1-0 home win over Manchester United and the 3-0 cup win over Manchester United at Old Trafford. And on VAR, it is David Coote. So, John, first up, West Ham at home. This, for me, is a must-win game. I think if we don't win this game, Newcastle can kiss goodbye to any narrow hopes that they've got of getting European place, especially with the way the other fixtures fall over the course of the weekend period. Newcastle yeah. need to win this game for me, John. That's absolutely right. And for me, they also need to win against Everton on Tuesday night. If yeah. we don't get six points out of those two games, we can forget about uh, we can forget about Europe. Because 
we're playing catch up anyway we've got no more wiggle room there's only 10 games to play these two are at home i mean let's look at it this way west ham we win against west ham we're one point west ham or seven we're one point behind them with a the game in hand we lose we're seven points behind them so mm. this first of all we have to get over the first hurdle to have any chance in europe and the first hurdle is would beat west ham having done that We've got to get over the second hurdle, which is would beat Everton. If we do those two things, we're set up for the other games, which are quite decent, good run in, we're set up. If we don't get, for me, you know, if we get four points, it's not good enough. We're not going to make yep. you because we've got to get six. We must get six. And the concern. I believe we can do it because the opposition on face them. West Ham and Everton at home. If you're going to be in Europe next year, you've got to be able to beat West Ham and Everton at home. But equally, what worries me is that you've got to beat Nottingham Forest at home, Luton at no. home, and Bournemouth no. at home, and we didn't beat any of them. No. Mm. So that is my concern. But the time yeah. for excuses is gone. The time for bad luck with injuries, the time for Vars to blame, the time for we're all exhausted and we're tired and all that's gone. This is a sprint now, not a marathon, a sprint. Ten games, end of season, finished. Do or die, now or never. And yeah, absolutely. Be up for it or we're not. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and at least we're... We'll get something out of this season. It's been a very, very frustrating time. Um, and, and, and not just for us spectators, but, um, but it must have been frustrating within the dressing room, particularly with all the injuries that have been suffered. My word, disappointing for the players who have, who, who have faced long layoffs. Uh, you know, no footballer wants to be off, not for a not not for a single match you know to to miss months at a time it is it it, oh, it it really is hard to bear for um for footballers and um and and so let's let's at least get some little um some something out of um out of this uh, season and that is get a european place it means overtaking west ham that's the, the first thing that's got to be done. It can't be done by playing them, but it can be done over the two home games. And, uh, and if that happens, then we've got a chance. Then we're looking um, back on people. Um, and, uh, you know, when you think we've only got 10 games to go this season, that's all. Just 10 games um, and then... Uh, and then you can all relax and go on your holes. Um, well, except for Gordon, <laughs> um, who I'm sure will be called up by, Absolutely. Um, by the Absolutely. England. I mean, yeah, for me, this trip to Mount Dubai, the yeah. trip to, to Dubai for the ones that were, I mean, the ones that were on the national duty, they are training and playing the whole time. Mm. The rest went to Dubai. And for me, You've got to keep the fitness levels up by having them taking over and training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for me, the most important thing in Dubai was team bonding, was yes. really getting them together, rediscovering that one for all and all for one uh, feeling, the a siege feeling, if you like, us against the world, discovering, getting rid of the self, the self doubt. Because I've looked at Newcastle United recently. And the biggest problem isn't a lack of team spirit, because I don't think the boys are like that. But what it is, is that you can see self-doubt in the minds of individual players that doubt themselves yeah. and they doubt the team just a little bit, the capability of getting results. And that self-doubt spreads like a cancer if it's allowed to. What Eddie had to do out there, and he's a very shrewd boy, and I'm certain he did do it, was rid the mind of all negative thoughts. Negative, yeah. Rid, rid yeah. the mind of yeah. excuses. 
just bond show them all what they did have one-on-one -on -one meetings sit joe willick down and tell him what he did great last season sit sit isaac down and say you've got 16 goals you can get up to 20 you're a great player yeah this because he was just being that little bit short as well you just sit these well he, he didn't have isaac in um in dubai of course because he was away with sweden but now they're back he can do that with isaac but he can sit down long stuff and he could sit down so many different players and say come on you are good your quality that's why we brought you to this club get rid of the self-doubt but trust yourself and trust the bloke that's at your elbow that's playing alongside you get that trust back because i've looked at newcastle and I don't know about you two guys, but what I've seen is individuals riddled with self-doubt in recent games. Uh, yes, riddled with self-doubt, John, I, I agree. And also one or two carrying injuries. Oh, uh, yes, of uh, course. Yes, of course. Yeah. They have. They've come back yeah. too soon, but they haven't had an option. And that sure, produces sure. self-doubt. That produces self-doubt. But hopefully um, this period of time, since the last match um has, has allowed those injuries to um to heal and and, and the guys to get themselves fit and uh, and no better place than dubai i think to do that my yeah word. i mean the point <laughs> is that often you know a, a hour before kickoff we get the team sheet and often i've looked at recent games i've looked at the team sheet and i've thought hey that's okay that team's quite good. That team, I fancy mm -hmm. that team. Etc. But you know what? It's the team sheet is flattered to deceive because some of the names on it, like Longstaff, like Willick, like Isaac, like Bachman before the injury, the names are on, and we remember how good they were last season, but they weren't playing to that level this season because they were carrying injuries and then yes. doubts come in. And, so the names give a false impression that we had a good team out there but it wasn't the real Buckman that was playing it wasn't the real Isaac that was playing it wasn't the real Willick that was playing it was a slightly it was an 80 percent Willick well an 80 percent the 20 percent mission is hugely important and and right. that because that has been the problem yeah just just on on um, the Buckman situation John um that it was his decision not to have a have an operation and to continue playing and i think what what what, what were you thinking lad what were you thinking you know you're going to make the injury worse not better when you're playing um so i really don't understand that i don't know why the club didn't make the decision and saying you're going under the knife I mean, you, you see, yeah, just taking on the point I was making about how pleased we are um, to see certain people back at it. My first indication for Saturday is that I will play, start Elliot Anderson and give Longstaff the rest he's wanted for weeks. I, I think he's been carrying an injury similar to... Totally. But having said what I've just said, we don't know. I'm saying that, remembering the Elliot Anderson I've been watching at the end of last season and the beginning of this season but the one that played on saturday might be a pale imitation of that because he yeah. might be nowhere near ready enough to be able to to do it sure. and live up to his reputation so you don't know and only eddie sees him on the training ground and knows how ready he is to start yeah. again but i tell but you the you... one thing i do know the one thing i do know malcolm is that sean longstaff is ready for a rest yes yeah and but these people who have been out with um with the long-term injuries it takes a hell of a long time to build your fitness up to a level that uh will see you through 90 minutes of premiership football yeah well isaac's so, been talk isaac you see you, you've had you've had um eddie admitting after the last game that it, uh, Longstaff's been playing with injections to kill the pain etc etc mm -hmm. Isaac when he was out in Sweden was talking about the difficulty he suffered this season where he's had an injury come back without saying to help the team come back a bit quick had the in another yeah. injury straight away and gone out 
and he's never reached the level that he is at his very best with. And sure. when he's at his best, he's explosive. He is terrific. He's got 16 goals. He can get 20 goals this season. He's only got to get another four. And we haven't had a bro score 20 goals in the season since Shearer exactly 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, but and, but, and, but and he's John, still not in, quite the bloke that he was. I, absolutely. But, but I think, though, that Newcastle, they have a, a very small squad for what they're looking to achieve. Um, and... Uh, uh, and you get a few injuries, and by heavens, you really are stretched tight. Then, and 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 Newcastle have they have the financial wherewithal not to have that kind of a problem to be able to 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 spend, bring players in, but that they, they are totally restricted by this FFP and this FFP. The way it works at the moment is preventing. Premiership football clubs from doing their job properly. And I think that that must be a great concern. Uh, I think the, the top six clubs, they're quite happy with it. They're more than happy because FFP is a very recent thing into the game. They had their squads all set up, big squads. Look at Man City, look at Liverpool, look at Arsenal. Um, but... The new, the new boys that are suddenly coming into it, Aston Villa, Newcastle United, um, West Ham possibly, um, and and they haven't got that kind of the, the kind of numbers that are required. You look at Manchester City; they can put out two pretty even um, Premier League sides. Two, Newcastle are struggling to put out one, and. Yeah. And a lot of it is to do with down to, to FFP because Newcastle well, it's, it's, is not being allowed to do their job properly when suffering injuries like they have done. And and, yeah. and, and I think it's got to be looked at, at very carefully and a lot of changes made to it. It suits the top six. Oh, by heavens, it suits them. But uh, it's not allowing the Aston Villas and the Newcastle Uniteds to get up to the kind of strength that will that will seriously take on that top six. Okay, we've got Everton on Tuesday night as well. So let's get um, predictions from you guys uh, on both games, West Ham and then Everton. John, you first. Yep, we'll win both games. I can't contemplate anything else. It's easy to contemplate anything else. But if we don't, our season's finished with eight games to go. And I just can't contemplate that. If you And I will reiterate what I said earlier in this podcast. If you're going to play in Europe, you beat West Ham and Everton at home. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't deserve to play in Europe. You don't deserve to play in Europe. And West Ham are above us, but they're not a class above us. They're just above us in the table. They're not a class mm. above us. They've got good players, Paquette, uh, uh, Bowen, um, Ward Prowse. But every side has got some good players. They will be sitting tonight and saying, oh, we've got to be careful in Newcastle. Their form hasn't been good, but they've got Bruno, they've got Gordon, they've got Isaac. They'll be mm. naming players mm. that they're scared of, and we can name players in their side that we're scared of. Bottom line is... This side is beatable. West Ham is beatable. First things first, we've got to beat West Ham. After we've done that, we've got to beat Everton. And both are possible. And I've got to believe they are. I can't carry on believing that we're going to have to get late goals to get a point like we did against Luton and like we did against Bournemouth. I've got to think differently to that. Otherwise, we stack our hand. And I've got to think that the bonding that's gone on in Dubai, the rest some players have got, the positivity that, that is in their heads now because Eddie has spent every day doing that out there and with the rest of the international players as they've come back sort of today in the training and tomorrow, we've got to cling to the hope that this is our last chance but we're capable of taking it and i don't want to hear uh, any words that let the fans win it for us 
because and that is true and the fans are with them but the fans it let the players win it for us you've got to give the fans some encouragement to back the players as well they're down they want if if Newcastle start on the front foot against West Ham and go at the game and go at it at pace and close down and that, the crowd will get behind them straight off and we'll roll them on to victory. If we start tippy-tapping it about midfield, it's slow and they just are allowed to get two banks of four, etc., etc., it's a slog. It's up to us to do the job. It's only a sprint now. It's not a marathon. We can see the winning post. So the players haven't got to keep going for week upon week and month upon month. They've yeah. got a, they've got a, if it's short sprint into the end of the season. Let's keep it alive by getting the two wins that we need at home. And I don't think it's going to be easy. It might be like 2-1 against West Ham and it might be 1-0 or whatever against Everton. But it doesn't matter what the score is, as long as we have one more goal than them. That's right. Yes. Three points from both of those two games. And that sets us right up, really in with a chance. And uh, and, and, it, it, and if that doesn't uh, drive the team on, then nothing will. And uh, I, I, I see us winning both games. Um, and I shall be annoyed if we if we even concede in those two games. I really will. Um, and uh, and I think the the pace of Gordon and Isaac is way too much for West Ham. That's for sure. So yeah, I'm going two wins. Um, I'm going to go two nil against West Ham, and I'm going to go one nil against Everton. John, have you got a score prediction? Two two one against West Ham. And yeah. I don't care about everything as long as we have one more goal than them. Uh, yeah. But it could be exact. It could be exactly the same score again. I keep yeah. giving one to the opposition because I have an awful job visualising Newcastle keeping a clean sheet. I know we did it against Wolves at home, but both their top scorers and their best player, both the top scorers were out, and their best player Neto was off by half time, which all helped the clean sheet. But um, I would love a clean sheet. But two one wouldn't won't upset me. I won't say, "Oh, we'll let it go in." Isn't that awful? No, I'll take two one twice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for a one one against West Ham, and I'm gonna go a two one win against Everton. I think four points is what we'll get over the weekend. So I'm not as positive as you two guys. I think a lot depends on the teams that we'll put out. Though, if we can, if we can put out some. Uh, if we can put out a good strong team and 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 maybe get the get you know get something out of Lewis Hall. You know, the guy sat on the bench all season. He looks good when he gets on. Maybe he's give Lewis Hall a chance if we are still strong. Who's that again? Who's he again? Lewis Hall, exactly. Exactly. Well, give Lewis, give him, and Harvey, him and Harvey Bonds have become the equivalent of Shergar and Road Lucan, haven't they? They have, yeah. <laughs> Lads, been a pleasure as always. Uh, it'll be a pre recorded show next week, but we will be still showing that on Thursday. Uh, look forward to seeing you then. Have a good Easter, lads. Take care. Indeed. All the best. Have Keep a good weekend, faith, everybody. Boys. Enjoy your football. Keep the faith. Uh...